Hello everybody, sorry, my name's Kevin Lane. Uh, I served a 20 year sentence for murder. I have been in prison for kidnapping as well, although it wasn't the same offence. Uh, I've now been released into society and I'm currently launching a new product into this country in in uh, a new new design for, for a home using modern methods of construction. As you know, Mickey, I was in Franklin with you um or triple category a and people have got to stop saying i'm talking bollocks triple category a existed exceptional risk existed i was held at exceptional risk triple a whilst on remand with the ira godfathers uh andy russell wayne hohen god rest his soul he's dead now i don't believe in god but it's just saying um and other people of his ilk like um the Notch safe, safe robber, Valerio Valici. They were an exceptional risk at one time. And a few others, of course. Yeah, I've got, I'm going to have more control over it in future. I did that last summer, that uh, documentary. There's two days worth of filming. To be fair, some of the questions that were being put to me, I knew the nature of that question and where it was going. And... For instance, when I said, and you are in society, and I went, yes, as if to say, I, I can be violent and I'm in society, but it didn't look too clever. But I thought, I'm going to answer this for the benefit of Charlie. And I might have to take a bit on the chin here, which I have done. But nonetheless, I think the, the, pod, the, the documentary has got the backing of the country, predominantly. Yeah. For the sake of that, this is what I've said. Charlie's done. 48 years. In that 48 years, how many paedophiles and rapists or people have committed acts on the vulnerable have been in prison and released? Rearrested, in prison and released. So they might have been in and out three or four times, okay? And they say so it's half a million people in 48 years have been in and out. We know it's a lot more than that, okay? Yeah. But over 48 years, if uh, half a million offenders have been in and out of prison, how many lives have they destroyed? And I had my arm in a sling for six weeks where he ripped all the ligaments in my arm when I was CNR in me, but he was standing the other side of my head this way and pulling my arm back past my head. That's what he was trying to do. <laughs> so, I, you know, and he got rubbly tackled off of me and then he left the job in the end. I don't know why. But that's the type of thing you got to put up with in them units or in the blocks. Not really. Kev, where where was it that you met Charlie and when was it? Whitemore, Belmarsh, Franklin Blocks. All in the blocks. Have you ever been on the wings with him? No, because he was always in the control centres and then I was in special secure units. The only time I met Charlie is when I was in Belmarsh unit. He was in the block there. I was in the block. He was, I was in the block. He was on. He was on the wing to begin with. Uh, and then he took the little, the Iranian hostages, didn't he? Oh, I read. Oh. And he made him tickle his feet. <laughs> <That's what he laughs> did. My homes, and me working. So, I've spoken to this. The cut my supply chain and a company that I'm currently negotiating with. And we are prepared to set up a charity. Not me, I'm not having I, I will I won't be at the helm. The seven hundred million pound company will be at the helm. And we will supply a home for Charlie at cost through the fundraiser. And it'll be a beautiful home with space that he's not used to living in, in terms of he needs to have space, he needs to have a nice bedroom, he needs to have a bathroom, living room, dining room. He's lived in one room, as we know, for 48 years. Yeah. And possibly put him on a little piece of land somewhere where he is away from people and he can pick and decide where he wants to go, when he wants to come out without having people harass him. Yeah. So we're looking at that at the moment, and 
it, it's I, I think it's an option for Charlie to to be released hopefully a little bit more securely because that'll be a massive problem for him when he's out if he's living amongst loads of people he's just going to get constantly harassed isn't he the press the paparazzi yeah. are going to be following him everyone and it's just going to be too much isn't it? so charlie there's a few things that people have to try and understand about where charlie's been and how he behaves so he answered a few questions such as um do you have any regrets but charlie you have no he has no regrets that's his life so he's lived his life what charlie might have wanted to say is but he can't because he's not he's not been used to um showing such emotion because yeah. he's been used to being battered and punished so you become hardened yeah. so he won't say i regret what I've done, he will say, that's my life. I've had to get on with it. Okay. But behind that, Charlie would say, well, I wouldn't want to cause anybody any real harm unless they absolutely deserved it. But he hasn't got that in him to say that at the moment because of where he's lived for so yeah. long. So people must be a little bit more mindful about some of his answers. What he did say there was, I've got no regrets. That's my life. I say this, life shuffles the cards and we have to play with the best hand that we're dealt. Yeah. I've had a hard, a hard uh, uh, I've had a few dodgy hands and I've had to play with them hands. So it, pre -release, it prepares you for release. And it's a, predominantly for lifers and people who've served a long time. Right, yeah. I don't feel Charlie should be going into the mainstream prison system. He was talking about putting him into Whitemore landings. Are they crazy? They're putting it, setting him up to fail if they put him there. It's just, it's you know, sometimes you think about their thought well, patterns. And I beg you, they need to get him. Beg, that's a backward step going back to dispersals, isn't it? He needs to be progressing. Yeah, he does. I've had people from prison officers, former serving prison officers, who have read a couple of uh, messages that I've put up and said, absolutely bang on, Kevin. You've got it absolutely right. Charlie needs to be put somewhere away from people uh, where he can lead the rest of his life. And he said, I was a serving prisoner officer when he when I started the job and I've retired and Charlie's still in. He said, it isn't right. And that's from prison officers. Yeah. These are prison officers, Ricky, that you and I both know. And you think, thank God for them, because our lives could have made a hell of a lot worse if they'd have all been arseholes. Oh, absolutely, I Like you see, fucking, they're not all bad. Obviously, we've come across a lot of good screws inside. I've never screwed any, but I've, I've come across a few good screws. I've been a mighty screw in. During my 20 years, said, <laughs> <laughs> get up with you, baby. 